What's going on everybody? Ronnie DiMaggio here, product specialist with BMW of Morristown. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a super thorough walk around and overview with this 2023 BMW M2. So the 2023 M2 is finally here. It has arrived at our dealership. We actually got two in this past week and we're really excited to share the new M2 with you guys. So the M2 is new for 2023. This is the G87, the second generation of BMW M2, following up on the F87, the first generation M2. This is a very important car, not just because it's the newest uh, M car in the current lineup, but because the F87, the car that came before this, the first gen M2, was so thoroughly beloved amongst enthusiasts and BMW fans. And so the G87 has big shoes to fill. I'll go right out of the gate and say it. I think it has filled the shoes quite nicely. I am a big fan of this car and I'm gonna share with you guys why I think the G87 is such a great car, why it's so special and important. And we'll go over all of the details in this video. We'll do front end, side and rear exterior styling. We'll go under the hood to talk about the engine, the transmission, the powertrain. We'll also hop inside and talk about the interior. And along the way, we'll go through all the little details on the 2023 M2. So let's go ahead and get started under the hood. Under the hood of the 2023 M2, we find a familiar powertrain. This is the S58. It is a three liter twin turbocharged inline six cylinder. This is the same engine that we find in the M3, the M4, the X3M, X4M. So it's a powertrain that BMW has been using for a little while now, and it has found its way into the M2. So in M2 form, it makes 450 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. That is good for zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds when you send the power through the rear wheels, which is the only place to send the power in the M2, no all wheel drive option. Uh, and that is through a six speed manual transmission, which this car is equipped with. And you can get an eight speed automatic that will drop your zero to 60 time down into the three second range. But with the stick, you're getting 4.1 seconds to 60. Let's talk about this S58 for a little bit. It is an incredible powertrain, extremely potent, and it makes a lot of power up in the top of the rev range, as is typical with BMW M engines, more traditional BMW M engines. Uh, it's relatively high revving above 7,000 for a turbo engine, it's pretty good, uh, but it also makes really nice low down torque. You don't have to work for that power like you used to in cars like the E46 M3. You had to rev that thing to the moon to get any power out of it. The M2 is not the case. That is not the case here. Uh, you have really strong torque down low in the power band, which is fantastic. It's also a really stout engine as far as being robust and built to last and built to tolerate some potential additional horsepower uh, compared to what BMW gives it from the factory. So the B58 upon which this engine is based has a closed deck, it has forged rods, it has a forged crankshaft. The S58 obviously gets all that stuff and more additional benefits to make it even more robust. Uh, I just saw on Instagram a G80 M3 broke into the nines on stock turbos, I think. That is a ton of power and the stock bottom end, so really impressive that the car is able to hold that much power. That's an M3 S58, but mechanically identical to this one here. Really impressive engine, really stout. Uh, and one thing I also wanna mention with the S58, specifically in the M2, it's rated at 450 horsepower from BMW. But as we know, BMW really likes to underrate their horsepower ratings. And I just saw that IND, a popular aftermarket uh, supplier and company, they just got their M2 on the dyno. They just got their development car and it made 460 horsepower to the wheels uh, bone stock and low 400s torque to the wheels. So that puts it up well above 500 horsepower to the crank from factory. So significantly underrated, obviously 4.1 seconds is the rated time from BMW to 60, but I'm sure it can outperform that pretty easily uh, if you can hit those shifts properly. So that's the powertrain. Like I said, eight speed auto or six speed manual. You can choose between those two at no cost. So the automatic is free, the manual is free. Uh, you can choose your transmission uh, with no cost penalty either way and rear wheel drive only for now. I suspect maybe sometime in the future, this is pure speculation, we don't know this, BMW has not confirmed this officially, uh, that an all wheel drive variant might be coming in competition form. We will have to wait and see, but for now rear wheel drive only in the M2. So that's the engine. Let's go ahead and talk about front end styling. All right, so styling up front here with the 2023 M2, 
It is a big, big departure from the M240, the regular two series upon which the M2 is based. It's an even bigger departure from the F87 that it replaces. So let's go ahead and talk about styling. I'll start with perhaps the centerpiece of the front fascia, which will be, of course, this front grille. Particularly, it's important to note that it is regular size that is proportional to the car. BMW has been pushing the big grille quite a bit on M3s, M4, 7 Series X7, all of big grills. I personally don't mind the big grille at all. However, I know that a lot of people don't like the big grille, but I think the M2 uh, has a much more reasonably sized grille, and I'm sure enthusiasts are happy about that. It's also frameless. You can see there's no chrome trim or black trim or anything around it. The grille is kind of just uh, integrated into the bumper really nicely. So I think the grille looks great. Interestingly, in the grille area, you can see that the bumper actually has a bit of a recess in it to house the roundel. It kind of frames the roundel really nicely. I think that is a nice touch from a design perspective. It just sort of emphasizes the roundel, looks really nice front and center there. Along the side, we have single headlights. So BMW is pretty famous for doing quad headlights, most famously the Corona rings that we had on E chassis BMWs into the F chassis a little bit. We've kind of gotten away from Corona rings, moved into like Icon lasers and stuff like that, which also look really cool in their own right. Even the Icon lasers, all modern BMWs for the most part have quad headlights. The M2 just has one, obviously one headlight housing, but more importantly, one bulb and one singular daytime running light that runs along the bottom of the car. So not quite keeping in traditional BMW styling cues. However, that is a callback to the 2002, maybe the original two series to some, uh, which had single round headlights. So cool little retro styling element there. Uh, I think the headlights look cool and they have this nice little um, sort of extension of the grille that kind of falls underneath the headlight, which is a nice touch. Down below, we have a really, really wide opening and behind that opening is of course your radiator, some more cooling equipment. If you look really close, you can see the radiator and then the radiator is obviously perpendicular to the ground and then uh, parallel to the ground, mounted horizontally is what I believe is an oil cooler. So lots of cooling stuff going on down there and it's super, super open. So uh, lots of air is hitting that radiator at all times to maximize cooling for this S58. On either side of that central area there, you have more openings in the bumper and of course more cooling equipment in there, auxiliary radiators, things like that to keep everything nice and cool. Speaking of those side air intakes, they are quite squared off. As you can see, they have a square sort of shape to them and that is pretty atypical for BMW, especially in the current lineup and compared to the standard 2 Series M240, things like that. That car doesn't, it's, it, in fact, the front end of the M240 is sort of triangular. So the M2 has a much different look. It's very boxy looking in the front as well as the back, as you'll see those square vents. I think, again, I think they look really nice. The M2 has been criticized for its styling quite a bit. I honestly don't get it at all. I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, there are parts of it that are a little bit different and maybe a little bit awkward in some angles and pictures, but as a whole, I think the styling front end all over the car is really, really nice. I wanna point out the hood, which has a really classic BMW looking power bulge. You can see it really clearly. We'll so show a side angle as well but you can see that the hood has a really prominent bulge in there and you can see that when you're sitting in the car looking out over the hood, you see that power bulge that was uh, famous on the E46 M3, E90 F80, all those cars had it. We see it continued on the G87. So that's the front end, let's move around to the side. All right, along the side of the 2023 M2, we have perhaps my favorite angle on the car. I really love the side profile of this car. It's super typical BMW, but we'll start front to back and then talk about the side in general. Starting up front, let's talk about these wheels. This is a 19 wearing a 275 35 19 tire Michelin Pilot Sport 4S and it has that little star on it. So, you know, it's a special formula for BMW, which is cool. The wheel is black, of course, as you can see, and we have a nice blue painted caliper hiding behind it. So two wheel options for the M2 as far as colors go, only one real wheel option. It's the 930M, super similar to the 825 that you see on G80 and G82 M4s. Uh, but that is the sole wheel option for now on the M2, and you can have it in black like this, or you can have it in bicolor. It's called a 930M instead of an 825. They look identical to me. I think BMW just differentiates that wheel number because of the way that the wheels are finished. So the bicolor on the M2 is a little bit different than the bicolor on the M3 and M4, uh, but that's the wheel looks really, really nice. And speaking of the wheel, the track is wider on the M2. It actually has the same track width as an M4. So really similar wheel setup to M3, M4, same tires as well, 275, 35, 19 front, 275 uh, or 285, 
uh, 20 in the back. So that's the wheel, and around the wheel is perhaps my favorite design element of the M2, a really substantially flared fender. I mean a really wide fender. When you look at the car from the dead front on angle, you can see just how bulbous and muscular those fenders look. I think flared fenders are the best way for car designers to kind of emphasize the athleticism and like how muscular a car is. And the flared fenders on the M2 look awesome in the front. They're even better in the back, but really substantial flared front fenders there. Moving along to the side of the car, we have an M winged mirror cap trimmed in Brooklyn gray. This car is Brooklyn gray metallic body color uh, along the window trim, it is gloss black, and at the back of the window trim, as you can see here, we have a really prominent, very classic BMW Hoffmeister kink, which looks awesome. And sort of between the front and back wheels is perhaps the best place to see the width of the car, because the door is sort of inset. Uh, it is not uh, as far out as the flared fender, so you can see the way that the fender tapers into the door line really emphasizes the width of the car on the side there. Coming along to the back, we have the back fender, obviously, which is absolutely massive. Really, really nicely flared out. Looks really, really cool. Very muscular, like I said before. And then we have our 20-inch rear wheel wearing a slightly larger 285 wide Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire. Super grippy tire. Fantastic tire. Also on the side, more like the roof, uh, is the carbon fiber roof. So this car is equipped with the carbon fiber roof. You can option, at least in the U.S. market, you can option a sunroof or car carbon fiber. Those are the only two options. So carbon fiber roof is a standalone option, or it can be lumped in to the carbon package, which also gets you carbon fiber trim, the M carbon bucket seats, and some nice goodies like that. But carbon fiber roof is a standalone option is a nice thing to have. It lowers that center of gravity. It's also quite a bit lighter than the standard sunroof. The M2 is a pretty heavy car nowadays. It weighs about 3,800 pounds or so. Quite a bit heavier than the old M2 and BMW of old, uh, BMWs of old, but the carbon fiber roof definitely helps with that and it brings that weight lower to the ground, which is really nice. But that's the side. Let's move around to the back and talk about the styling there. All right, around back of the 2023 M2. Styling is very continuous across the entire car. The front sort of matches the back. I think that's really cool and you'll see that specifically with these square elements on either side of the rear bumper. You have similar shaped elements in the front to serve as air intakes. In the back bumper, obviously there's no air intakes or anything, but you have a similar shape and a similar location to sort of add continuity to the exterior styling. Moving along to the bottom of the bumper, you can see we have the signature M quad tip exhaust, dual exhaust outlets with two tips in each outlet. So a quad exhaust, that signature BMW M looks really cool and sounds really cool as well, obviously. So let's take a quick listen to an exhaust clip. As you heard, the M2 sounds really good. In my opinion, it actually sounds a little bit more aggressive than the M3 and the M4, especially when you put it into Sport Plus mode like we had it for that clip. Sounds really cool. You get some nice little crackles and pops, nice tone. Very typical BMW inline six, kind of raspy, mechanical. Not necessarily the most like sonorous, beautiful sound that a car will make, but it sounds sort of raw and aggressive. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, up top, we have a body color lip spoiler, which looks really, really nice. Very subtle, nothing crazy but looks nice. And the taillights, same thing, relatively subtle. There's nothing crazy going on there. They're a nice shape. They do have some cool clear elements down in the bottom. So it's like part clear, part black, part red, lots of colors going on in the taillights, but I think they're a nice shape and I think they suit the car quite well. That's the rear end styling. Let's wrap up styling in general. Overall, like I said in the beginning, my opinions of this car styling wise are really quite positive. I think it looks nice. I think they've done a good job with the proportions, especially if you look at the side of this car, it is as BMW as it gets with the side profile. Really distinct rear wheel drive proportions. You can see there's a pretty significant gap between the front axle line and the front of the front door line, which is classic. You have a long hood, a short overhang in the back, a Hoffmeister kink that is as classic as it gets. So side profile is 
A plus from me. The front end, even the back is also, you know, it's different. It's, I would not call those classic BMW, but I think they look good and they still have elements of BMW typical styling, quad exhaust, those 2002 era or esque headlights, the M power bulge in the hood, the kidney grill. So there's a lot to make you say when you look at it, that looks like a BMW but there's enough to make it different and kind of unique. It's definitely a standout as far as styling goes in the showroom. That's the exterior styling. Let's go ahead and hop in the trunk to talk about the practicality storage space and we'll get in the back seat to talk about the practicality back there as well. So around back with the trunk in the M2, let's get into some practicality daily driver ability sort of thing. So no power trunk, as you saw, you do have to manually lift the trunk, but it's nice and light, so that's no problem. In the trunk, as you can see, you do have a fair amount of storage space. However, it is not the most spacious trunk in the BMW lineup by any means. It's obviously one of the smallest, with the two series being one of our smallest cars. Uh, not quite on par with a three series, even a four series. It is uh, spacious enough. You can definitely get two uh, sets of golf clubs back there, no problem but that's about the limit. You're not gonna squeeze, probably not three, definitely not four in there, uh, but reasonably practical, plenty enough for the average grocery run or weekend trip for two people. You can easily, very easily fit those two people's luggage in the back. And if you only have two people, you have your 40-20-40 split folding rear seats, which you can fold down however you like if you need extra cargo capacity and storage. So not the biggest trunk, but plenty big enough for what I would imagine are 90% of people's daily driver usage. Uh, most people will have no problem fitting a grocery run or a weekend trip or a set of golf clubs or whatnot in the back of the M2. So nice trunk, no frills. There's nothing really fancy, no storage under the floor or anything like that. Just a super standard, reasonably sized trunk. So let's move on to the back seat. All right, so back seat in the M2 is gonna be really, really tough to get a good camera angle on. Obviously we only have front doors, no back doors or anything like that to show you, but I'm gonna do the best that I can to give you an idea of what it's like. You do have a super easy and convenient latch right here. You can just pull that and push the seat forward and it will move itself into place. Now, I am about five foot nine sitting behind myself. This front seat is is in the position where I would put it as a driver. I'm gonna move this back. You guys are gonna be able to see me, but you'll still be able to hear me. Uh, I can move this back into the position that I would sit in as a driver, and it's tough to really, like I said, see. Uh, maybe we'll throw some B-roll clips in, but I have maybe an inch and a half of knee room there. I do have decent foot room. I can put my feet under the seat. I can sit perfectly straight up, totally straight in my spine and my head is just barely hitting the roof, but it is indeed hitting the roof. So as far as backseat practicality goes, it's easy enough to get in and out. As you saw, I got in pretty easily, um, but it's not the most spacious for full-size adults. I would imagine if you have a driver that's about my size, five foot nine, sitting up here, you can fit somebody uh, as tall or shorter behind them but if you have somebody that's above six foot in the driver's seat, there's really not gonna be a lot of space behind them, but you can put somebody in the passenger seat and move that forward. It is possible for four people to sit back here, uh, for four people to sit in the car, two in the back seat. Definitely doable if nobody is crazy tall, but I'd say four, five, 10 and under adults is possible. Not extremely comfortable for the people in the back, but you could do it for an hour or so, uh, an hour long trip. I would be okay in the back seat there. Uh, anything long, longer than that, I wouldn't wanna go cross country in the back seat, but it is usable. Children, perfectly fine. And you do even have child seat anchors back there if you wanna use it as a family vehicle. That's the back seat. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the driver's seat, the front passenger compartment, the cockpit, the tech, all that good stuff. So let's check that out now. All right, inside of the 2023 M2 is a very, very nice place to be. BMW has taken the build quality to a next level with this generation of the M2. Some F chassis cars, you can tell that the build quality was not at BMW's highest potential. It was not the best but that has totally been remediated with all G chassis cars, but that includes the G87 M2, the build quality in here. And I'm just starting with this because it's the first thing that really jumped out to me is really, really nice. Everything feels really solidly screwed together, really nicely built, great liberal use of high-end materials. So build quality is great as you would expect of every single new BMW and as is true of every single brand new BMW. But one thing to note specifically for those folks coming in out of, out of an F87, a first gen M2, you're gonna notice a big 
improvement in the build quality. Now, let's start off with some of the driver specific stuff, particularly ergonomics. These seats are really comfortable. Like I said before, these are the standard seats. You can option up to a carbon fiber bucket seat straight out of the M3, M4, and M5 CS if you would like to. For grand touring, for daily driving, the base seats are probably best, although if it were me, I would spec those carbon buckets because darn do they look really, really good and they hold you in place like nobody's business. It's uh, really an impressive sport seat, really impressive racing seat, something you would see in like a GT3 or um, some crazy race car. Uh, you can get your M2. So really, really cool to see the carbon buckets. That would be my choice. They're perfectly comfortable for extended periods of time. I can sit in them for hours at a time and not have problem. The getting in and out is kind of a pain in the rear end, quite literally sometimes with the carbon fiber bucket seats, but you can get over that. Um, it's worth it for the look and for the performance enhancements with the carbon buckets you're locked right in place when you're doing some aggressive driving. You have adjustable lumbar support, you have inflatable and deflatable side bolsters, so you can kind of tailor how tight the car is squeezing you. That goes for the carbon buckets as well, minus the lumbar support. Uh, but seats are good. Steering wheel is fantastic. This is BMW's classic three-spoke steering wheel that we do on all of the G chassis M cars and M performance cars, even just cars with M Sport package, get this really awesome steering wheel. So I love the steering wheel. It's a nice thick rim, really substantial 10 and two notches. You have that M tricolor stitching, little hollowed out piece at the six o'clock portion. And of course your customizable M1 and M2 buttons. So the way those work are you press this setup button down here in the center console. You adjust all the parameters exactly to your liking, the throttle response. Uh, we can actually just go through them here. You have engine, so that's throttle response. You have gear shift assistant, which is your auto rev matching. Like I said, this car is a six speed. You have chassis, that's your damper stiffness. You have steering, is steering weight brake is the initial bite on the brake pedal. And then M traction control, that's a nice uh, segue into that. So M drive pro is standard on all M2 models, which is awesome. That gives you the M traction control as well as the drift analyzer, which is a super cool feature. You can go out onto your closed course or private property and pull the sweetest drift you can and the car will tell you if you stink or if you're good at drifting. So it's pretty cool, the drift analyzer. I love that. I love that they made that standard on the M2. Definitely a fun thing to play around with if you have access to a skid pad or a privately owned empty parking lot or anything like that. So that's the drift analyzer and M traction control. You can dial the M traction control all the way up to 10 if you want the car to really keep you in check. Uh, or you can dial it down to zero if you want no traction control and you want to do it all yourself. You want your right foot uh, and to a small extent, I guess, the clutch pedal. You want to be the traction control. You want to control that. You can do that if you just turn that off. So uh, that's the M1 and M2 button. So you can hold, adjust those settings, hold down on either one of these to save them. Or you can go into the actual M menu and tailor the sport exhaust on or off uh, or the auto start stop on or off stuff like that that is still existing on even the manual transmission cars you do have auto start stop so uh, many people make it a habit of getting in and immediately turning that off but if you like the fuel savings you can definitely leave that on more ergonomics steering wheel seat is great both armrests as you would expect with any bmw fall right at the exact same position which is awesome that's really comfortable for longer cruising one hand on the stick shift here one on the steering wheel you can see right ahead and you're perfectly comfortable the pedal box is wide enough and the pedal spacing is great for heel toe down shifting if that's how you like to drive if you want to turn off that gear shift assistant uh, you can really easily heel toe the pedals are spaced really nicely for that so that's really good. The clutch pedal, as far as feel goes, uh, it does have a pretty distinct hook in it, like a, a all G80, G8X uh, M cars with the six speed. They don't have a ton of uh, pressure required to depress the clutch completely. It's not a heavy clutch. Anybody can get in. A, a, a toddler could get in here and just press the clutch down. It's really quite light, but there is a really distinct bite point and almost like a hitch in the clutch. So. It's good because you know exactly where that bite point is. You know exactly when that clutch starts to engage the flywheel. However, for some people, it might be a little bit difficult to master. So uh, I personally don't mind the clutch feel at all. But speaking of the feel of things, they hit a home run, a bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, grand slam with this shifter feel. 
it is fantastic. So BMW has historically made some pretty nice feeling manual transmissions. In my opinion, I've never had an issue with any of the manuals in the BMWs that I've driven, uh, but they were also never, you know, superlative. So Porsche, um, believe it or not, Honda has actually made some really nice manual transmissions. Um, I shouldn't say believe it or not, Hondas, Hondas are uh, very good cars. BMW has really stepped their game up with this manual. So the throws are quite short, definitely shorter. So my point of reference, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from, is an F30 uh, six-speed manual. So that's my daily driver. The throws are significantly shorter than that. So if you're used to maybe an F80 or an F30, maybe an F87, uh, these throws are definitely going to feel very noticeably shorter. Uh, and also the feel is significantly better. There's a more positive engagement when you go into each gear. There's less of that vagueness. Uh, they've toned out a little bit of that rubberiness that is typical with F chassis uh, manual transmissions. So the shifter feels really, really good in this car. Speaking of the shifter area, we can talk a little bit about the tech. So you still do have your iDrive controller down here. Thankfully it is not relegated purely to touch screen. You can control pretty much everything with the iDrive knob if you'd prefer that, or you do have iDrive 8, of course, in the new M2, which is a full touch screen. You have wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, enhanced Bluetooth capability. You have uh, full Bluetooth as far as streaming, phone, all that stuff you would expect. And you also have your extremely expansive list of apps and things that you can go into to configure and customize in the car. So quite a bit of customization to do here in the apps menu. You do have native navigation, you have your setup, you have some enhanced M specific stuff. So you have a boost gauge, coolant temperature gauge. You can get tire temperature and pressure right here on the screen. So really, really good um, infotainment system. We are pretty big fans of iDrive 8. I personally am, am quite fond of it as I've gotten used to it. I think it works really well. It looks really cool, especially in the M cars, get their own special iDrive 8 font and colors. So it looks really nice. And iDrive 8 also includes the gauge cluster. So you have your gauge cluster here, which has the speedometer on the left, tachometer on the right, and your heads up display also includes uh, a speedometer or a speedometer and a tachometer if you would like. You also have your gear position over on the right. Never really understood that much for a manual transmission. If you wanna know what gear you're in, just divert your eyes down to the gear shifter. You can't mess that up or just feel it. If you're relatively familiar, you can just grab it and know what gear you're in. But as far as configurability with the gauge cluster, you have your M mode button down here in the center. So you can press that and then toggle between road, sport, and track. Road is your standard gauge cluster screen where you can configure what's shown in the middle, but not much else. You can go through a map. You can also show the uh, radio information. You can show your M setup, stuff like that. So you can go through a couple of different things, tire info and whatnot there in the gauge cluster in road mode but if we click m mode and then go over to sport things get a little bit sportier the tachometer just becomes a vertical bar over there on the right all in red your speedometer is purely digital you have gear position front and center you have your m setup on the left you have oil temp and gas over on the right and then at the bottom there you have some indicators for your traction control and what level the traction control is currently at and you can also go into the m menu here and configure that so you can change what's shown on the left instead of your m setup you can get tire temp or boost pressure uh, various things like that so the gauge cluster is great especially for a performance car if you want to even go a step further you can throw it in track mode and totally turn off this iDrive screen so you're not worried about anything over here all you have in front of you is pertinent information for really aggressive driving that also disables your safety systems blind spot lane keep so use that uh, cautiously because it does disable some inbuilt safety features but that is pretty cool as far as infotainment goes i think bmw's done a really nice job with that uh, visibility um, is really good like i said you can see that power dome out the side but the belt line the shoulder line here is a little bit high so it is just about at my shoulder in my seating position maybe i'm sitting a little bit lower than i would if i had this set up to my uh, perfect spot but you do have a high belt line but the mirrors are nice and big and it's a relatively small car so you can really place yourself on the road quite easily there rear visibility is perfectly fine that rear window is really nice and easy to see out of you don't have headrests to contend with because you can fold those down uh, blind spots are not uh, bad at all you can turn around and you do have a pretty substantial c pillar back there but uh, you have blind spot monitoring and i can see my blind spot fairly well 
Speaking of checking blind spots though, one of my favorite things about sitting in this car is you look out the window there, uh, and I'll get a clip for you guys to see this, and you see nothing but fender if you have your mirrors adjusted. Uh, so it's, there's just so much fender in the mirror. I think it looks really cool. It's a really nice kind of touch while you're sitting in the car to look out there and just see a massive fender. You can see the car's really wide hips out back. So you're always, if you're looking for a lane change, you're always noticing that you have uh, those really cool flared fenders back there, really prominent. That will do it for the inside of the M2 overall. Very comfortable place to be. The M2 is perfectly usable on a daily basis if you're gonna use it as your everyday car. But as far as comfort goes, the seats are usable, the sound system is nice, you have all the good tech that you would want, visibility is good, cargo space, uh, both in the trunk and the back seat is good. Plenty of room for water bottles and phones and wallets and stuff, so it is a perfectly usable interior here. That'll do it for the inside. Let's hop outside and we'll wrap up the video with our final thoughts on the G87 M2. All right, final thoughts with the 2023 BMW M2. Overall, I think BMW has done a fantastic job with this car. I really do think they did a great job. Uh, I really like the way it looks. I know that's subjective. You may not like the, lay, the way that it looks. That's totally fine. Looks are very subjective, but aside from that, the powertrain is there. We have a classic BMW straight six with great power. We have a six speed manual. We have a rear wheel drive. Uh, like we said, in my opinion, we have good looks, we have the right proportions, the right size, uh, really good tech, good practicality, daily usability. Uh, it's all there with the M2. I think they did a really, really nice job. Now, there are some complaints. Some people don't like the way it looks. Totally fine. We can sympathize with that. That is subjective. Uh, it is, uh, some people are mentioning that it's a little bit heavier than it should be. I don't disagree with that. I would like if the car was three, 400 pounds heavier, but in the real world, that really doesn't make that big of a difference. You're still going to be able to have plenty of fun with this car car in a straight line and on those twisty tight back roads or on a track so um, overall like I said they did a fantastic job with this car um, it really is kind of the spiritual successor to the E46 M3 I know it differs from that car in a lot of ways uh, but you know it's that sized within four inches uh, lengthwise of the E46 M3 it's got you know a straight six just like that did rear wheel drive six speed we we went through all the good stuff with the m2 so uh i think they did a fantastic job please let us know what you think of the new m2 down in the comments section below uh, but that will do it for this one thank you guys so much for watching uh, please follow us on instagram facebook and tiktok at bmw of morristown please like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you think we deserved it but that'll do it for this one thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one